Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Benediction Gamer, aka Pokerzeps, back again with another video. And today you can see it's a continuation of my trainer trials. But we're going for something slightly different today. I'm just coming at you with a new one, so this could be the NPC challenge. Um, so this me why I'm using a variation of teams um, that consist of Pokemon that um, you'd see NPCs normally use in the uh, the game. So the first one I'm coming at you with is the Bird Keeper Challenge. And this is going to be one where I'm trying to win an online battle using a team that consists of only bird Pokemon. Um, as you can see, it was quite a lot of fun. It was uh, quite challenging. Um, it took me a few games to get the win, as you're going to see, um, just due to people wanting to use um, the most favorable Pokemon in the meta. Um, especially, this is why casual battles aren't the most fun at times, um, because everyone seems to just be running you know, the most meta Pokemon, not necessarily everything that's fun. Um, but without further ado, let's get into looking at the team, and I hope you enjoy this one, Guiding Tools. So looking at the team, we're starting off um, with the main players going to be around um, is going to be our Babs, which is our Bombardier. Um, as you can see, we're running a Rock Terror type, um, Rocky Payload, which is going to increase our Rock Attacks. The main attack we're going to be running is Rock Slide. Um, to be honest, I could have probably run a Choice Scarf um, the way I was running it, um, but I wanted the options for the other moves as well, um, which you'll see later in the game. Um, second Pokemon we're going to be running Corviknight, he's uh, a bit bulkier offering something of course we've got our reliable uh, lieutenant watt um, and as we could see um, there is the option to pair lieutenant watt with pelipper if we wanted to run a, a rain dance team and potentially swap out the move discharge for thunder discharge is a fairly dodgy move to be running with this team because it's probably going to knock out most of it um, so we'd need to be running protect on a number of these um, and switch the moves around a little bit um, so we've got a faithful Murkrow, um, we're going to use him as a Taunter rather than a Tailwinder at the moment, um, but options to change um, Taunt for Tailwind as well. Um, foul play to put out good damage to any of um, his attack based uh, physical attackers. Um, and then Shaunt, um, just kind of like the move. How Lucha, um, big favourite of mine, um, good bird Pokemon to be running, um, to see good um, amount of defense against electric types and rock types so his weaknesses isn't too bad um, and also offers a good amount of offense um, and then finally to round out the team um, we're going to be going for a flamigo uh, named migos um, now i've gone for choice band which is probably potentially slightly questionable i am judging by the fact that i want to run detect on it um, but I thought, yeah, we're going to bring it in as a sweeper. Um, if I'd have used a co-star ability as well, it would have been even better. Um, but I didn't put it on. For now, I was being a bit lazy. I just left it as it was. Um, we see two other options we could run. Um, there's obviously Talon Flame um, with the ability to set the Tailwind, um, Acrobatics, um, and good fire damage as well. Um, with Flame Charge, we can boost our speed. Um, Braviary, um, fairly strange moves at the moment. That's not what I'd be running, but um, this is just... Uh, marked one I had. Um, so that's the team. Um, let's get into the gameplays now and I hope you enjoy this one guys. Okay, getting into attempt number one now. So um, as we can see, uh, lining up against a Pelipper Dreadnor. Why do I forget the name? Rotom, Hydreigon and a Scizor. Uh, Brelin, that's the guy. Um, so I'm going to go with the old faithful Babs to start off with. Um, so we're going to see this is the team that I'm going to be predominantly trying to run and win this team with. Um, and then as you actually see, I get fairly stuck into it. Um, it's the one I just stick to. Uh, really, don't really try to differ um, for now. Um, so yeah, we're going to be starting off with um, Babs. Um, we're going to be trying to um, terror, get a rock terror up um, to increase the um, rocky payload even further, get a rock slide. Um, be putting out reasonable damage um, to both our enemies um, and then get a how lucha um, hopefully if we can we can get sword dance in um, off the bat um, get that attack up and then hopefully we'll be able to sweep through a reasonable amount of teams um, and as we see in the back we're going to be running corvanite if we need to bring it in for a little bit of bulk um, and then also uh, we're going to be finishing off with flamigo um, hopefully that can come in and produce enough damage uh, to sweep anything that we need it to um, so we're getting into the game, um, we've taken a little bit of damage off the rock side there. Um, this is the game where I, I should have terrored right off the start, but I didn't. Um, for some reason, I don't always like doing it, but you see we got a lucky flinch there on the Pelipper, which was nice. Um, and we've managed to get our Sword Dance up on, onto our Halucha, which is nice. 
Um, so hopefully we can do a little bit of uh, damage now. So as we're going to see, as I stated earlier, um, we can bring Corviknight in for a little bit of bulk. So we're going to swap out Babs for now um, and hopefully save that Rock Slide for a little bit later on. And then on the Halucha, we're going to be looking to go for a Flying Press um, onto the Dreadnought. Now debating, do we go for the Terrestrialize because um, this could potentially produce us a knockout? Um, but I'm unsure, so in the end I've decided not to go for it. Um, so switching out Babs, and as we said, Corviknight's coming in, which means to offer a bit of bulk. Um, I'm imagining that Dreadnought's probably going to be going for another Rock Slide now. Um, if my calculations are correct, Halucha will be surviving this one. Um, so we should be able to at least get a little bit of chip damage off, um, which would be helpful. Um, we see fly, Flying Press, we didn't need to uh, go for the Terrestrialize, so we still managed to get the knockout. Sword Dance did its job. Um, unfortunately, uh, Pelipper has managed to come in with Hurricane, but we will take those things. So maybe we could have kept Babs on actually and gone for Rock Slide, because um, I think she would have outsped that Pelipper, um, and that that would have yeah potentially uh, saved our Lucha um, and maybe made this uh, more viable game for us. Um, but we seem debating what to do now. Um, do we bring the Flamigo in or do we save it? Uh, as the trump card to bring in near the end. Um, so back to Babs um, and at this point he's bringing in a Rotom um, so I'm thinking yeah, that's, we're going to be going for a Rock Slide um, on our Bombardier. Um, Brave Bird, um, is that what we're going to go for? Do we go for an Iron Head? Um, what's going to produce us the most damage? Um, I think okay, we're going to go for a Drill Peck. Um, let's not get any um, recoil damage while we can. I think a drill peck uh, would produce enough damage um, to see us through um, and get rid of the Pelipper. Uh, but also it's probably a bit of a bad play um, knowing the fact that the Pelipper is most likely running Protect um, and this Rotom is now going to be going for some form of attack. Uh, but as we can see Pelipper didn't actually go for a um, Protect. So it was an alright move in the end, although as we're going to see, moving to a um, Lightning Terror type, we wouldn't have done the greatest damage um, using a flying move. Um, that's the, down, the downside to running a Bird Keeper team. You, you only really got flying moves. Uh, although I am running quite a few dual types here, um, which may be bending the rules slightly. Uh, I'll leave that for you guys to decide. Should it be pure flying types? Uh, I mean, maybe that could be the next challenge: is uh, pure flying types, because um, doing this with dual types is somewhat manageable. Doing it with full flying types, uh, that's going to be a bit more difficult. But as we can see, it's coming with the uh, the high drag on now. Um, so I'm thinking, well, I've probably lost any speed battle here. Um, chances are we are about to lose this one. But it was a valiant effort by the guys uh, trying to get it. Um, they did the team compositions coming together a little bit. Uh, I think there's a couple more plays we could have made, um, which uh, would send us uh, in good stead um, and maybe you know um, set us up nicely uh, to go for the, the victory. Um, but this was always going to be a bit of a challenge um, up against these Pokémon, especially these last two sweepers he's coming with. I mean, very hard to compete against this um, terrestrialization um, Rotom, uh, especially with the fact that he got the rain dance up, um, extra accuracy on the thunder um, and now he's brewing high dragon um, we, we are losing most most speed battles um, so uh, it does look like that's going to be the end of us one big thunder to Flamigo and it's all end um, so that was that game guys um, but jumping into the next one let's see if we did any better Okay, um, I'm going to be loading into the next game in a moment. As you can see, we're going up a um, slightly different team, but again, um, very meta, um, containing some of the uh, yeah, the devil himself, uh, Gimme Ghoul, um, Tinkerton, um, a Garchomp, Mouskerada, that was also a bit of devil itself, um, Among Us, uh, you're not devil, I love you, Among Us, um, and a Dragonite. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a very difficult one for us to go up against. Um, I'm st starting this one thinking um, yeah maybe we need a bit of bulk um, so maybe best to start with Corviknight but um, as you quickly see um, I go straight against that and think no let's go uh, for the old faithful um, let's bring Halucha in there as um, our second uh, and see potentially can we get a sword dance off or do we just go straight in with um, some offensive attack and hopefully put in some good chip damage um, so that 
maybe we can um, do something in this battle um, but we're going to see so loading into the game now um, and we're going to see how uh, the, the opponent uh, looks to start um, so so it looks like they're leading with a Dragonite and Tinkerton uh, lead uh, to get it off with um, so it's going to be an interesting one I um, think maybe let's go for a rock slide and try to get double damage um, this time I like the last game going to uh, go in straight with the uh, terrestrialization and try and get some bonus damage on there um, with the Howlooch I'm thinking yeah okay so the chance I potentially going to be dragon dancing um, which may give me a chance to get sword dance off um, or how does he go to play with the Tinker Time. but then I get a little bit scared and think he may come straight in um, with a decent move to play rough um, so I'm going to back out and bring the Corviknight in um, but see this is a little bit of a misplay because um, unfortunately um, what I didn't factor into the fact was that the, it was most likely that he was going to be coming in with the uh, the move Fake Out um, which most people are going to be running on the Tinker Time. Um, so we can see yeah so terrestrialization up um, that nice terrestrialization rock hat that's actually one of my favorites um, but of course you see take a fake out from Tinkerton um, Dragonite with a tailwind um, perhaps a strange tailwind setter but um, I can see see the um, advantages of using it um, definitely one of the more bulky uh, tail up users um, so as we see when you go with this um, how do we uh, play with this so uh, I think Let's try and get as much damage into the uh, Dragonite as possible. Um, so for that we're going to be going for the Home Claws uh, to boost our damage for the uh, next turn. So hopefully um, we're not going to be taking too much damage on this turn. Um, we're going to see what this Dragonite is putting out. So we can now see Terrestrialize, gone for the normal Terrestrialization. Um, this could work out in my favour. I've um, got a couple of uh, Pokemon that I'm not using fighting moves um, so potentially we're going to be able to take out this Dragonite uh, quite easily um, but we'll see how this goes so Gigaton Hammer um, straight onto Babs which is not very good Bombardier is straight out of here um, the Rock Tower type seems to not favour as well this time um, so definitely a misplay there um, but Call of the Night getting the home calls up so a bit of attack up a um, bit of accuracy up so hopefully uh, we should be hitting all our moves um, as long as we can survive another turn um, I'm hoping we can put a reasonable amount of chip damage into an opponent um, or potentially knock an opponent out um, so we'll see how this goes for Call of the Night but the issue is also at this point um, we've been burnt so that's going to be cutting our attack in half um, so well Chances are we're probably not going to be knocking anything out, but we'll see how this goes. Um, so we're going to bring Howlucha in, and um, as I say, we've got two Pokemon um, capable of putting out fighting moves. Um, so we're hoping there's a good chance of knocking out this uh, Dragonite, um, but we'll see now. So flying press onto the Dragonite, um, hopefully going to go for the knockout. Um, Corvus, um, so yeah, so we got managed to get an attack stat up, but unfortunately, due to the burn, we're now going to be um, running a half attack. Um, so I think the best move to go for at this point, um, let's just try and get a Brave Bird in there. Um, hopefully we do enough damage to take out the Dragonite. Um, and as we see, it was a, probably a good move to double up. Um, in fact, that he's, he's, he's going to be left um, on one or two HP. Um, we know the Brave, the brave Bird's going to be knocking it out now. Um, so we know we haven't got to deal with uh, this Terrestrialized Dragonite, which is going to be running at boosted stats. Um, so that's, that's beautiful, that's off the field. Um, potential issue is how do we get anything else off the field um, this may be all we're going to be able to do in this fight but we shall see Corviknight has managed to um, get some HP back with leftovers is it going to be enough to survive the burn yes just about um, so maybe a good item choice on Corviknight there um, give myself on the pat on the back for that one let me know what you think about that one guys uh, but as we can see, it's maybe not the best team design because uh, so far we're going um, north from two at this rate. Um, we'll see. Um, so now he's bringing in, I say, the devil himself, Gimme Ghoul. Um, absolutely despise this thing. Um, I do like its walking animation though, it's got to be one of the best in the game. Um, be interested to know, guys, what other walking animations um, do you enjoy looking at? Um, so give me your um, on like it's, it's silver surfer, I mean golden surfer, but uh, yeah, I think that's a very cool one. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to know yours. Um, so perhaps leave a comment uh, down below. So looking back into the fight, so yeah, so, yeah, attack we were scared of earlier. That's why we removed Halicha from the field. Um, was the play rough? Um, so we see knocked out. Um, unfortunately, 
Um, we haven't been able to survive with enough Pokemon um, to outlast the Tailwind, and the chances are this battle is the end for us. Well, we've got a Flamigo up. Uh, I believe they have three Pokemon remaining, so it's going to be quite the task for Flamigo. But we never know. Let's get in there, Amigos, and see what we can do. Um, so we've got to try and go get rid of the uh, the Gimmigal. Uh, say the Devil of himself. Um, even if I lose this match, I'll be happy if uh, I can at least kill the Gimme Ghoul. Um, so yeah, duh, decent attack in there, Float Chop, uh, reasonable amount of damage. Unfortunately, like, we didn't bring um, Flamigo into the field earlier, perhaps. Um, he could have done something in this fight for us. But as we see, um, second game down and second loss. But hopefully we keep it up. Uh, we'll get there in the end. So keep, uh, keep tuning in guys and uh, let's get into the next game and see how we do in this one. And so moving into game 3 now, I'm looking, coming up against a completely different team again. Um, so this is quite a popular one I've been seeing lately. Um, tends to be an Indeedee Armour Rouge um, setup. Uh, so you can get Indeedee with the uh, Psychic Field. Um, um, but looking at the four Pokemon he's running, um, quite interesting as well. Um, so we've got Mousehold, Sylveon, a King King Gambit and uh, Among Us, so very um, very decent team um, capable of putting out. Um, so we'll see how we match up against this one. Um, so let's getting into the gameplay now. Um, so look, so yeah, as I said, um, it's most likely what we're going to come against. Um, an Armor Rouge and indeed he lead. Um, so Psychic Surge is out, um, which is going to block us, I believe, from doing any priority attacks. Um, would be an issue except from the fact we're not running any Pokemon I believe have any priority attacks. Um, so we'll see how we're doing this. Um, are we going to be quicker than them and how, how do we get on? So um, I believe let's start off with a, a Rock Slide. Let's get our Terror up onto our Bombardier again. Um, I think it's going to allow us the chance to, uh, to potentially go for a Sword Dance. I'm thinking the chance is probably going to be running a Follow Me onto the um, Indeedy, um, which I've made a misplay because I, sh I should have just gone for the flying press knowing that um, I just do a little bit of chip damage if I'm going to hit the armor rouge but if he has played the follow me I'll be doing better damage um, than I would be if I'm running acrobatics um, and as we see they've played the follow me um, so yeah a little bit of a misplay by me um, but we'll see um, in the grand scheme of things um, I don't fix effects the battle too badly um, just coming in with a rock slide now from Bombardier um, and as we're going to see that's a lot of damage and uh, even managed to get a flinch so that's an absolute bonus so that's yeah, the, the goal of this team really run rock slide hope we get flinches um, and hope that that rocky payload plus the terrorization um, rock terrorization um, is going to boost us to be able to do enough damage that hopefully Bombardier can be our main sweep um, and then our other free bird Pokemon can put enough chip damage to lead us to the victory um, so hopefully we can win a game as this bird team but as I say um, it's a fun one to run so guys definitely recommend a challenge like this um, and I say if you've got any suggestions uh, for teams that you feel I should run um, then just put them down in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear them and I say best one um, I'll probably pick out um, and try running one of those um, So look out for that as a future video But as we can see we got off to a brilliant start with managed to get the Indeedy and the Armor Rouge off the field um, So yeah for once um, it's looking like uh, we could be on for a victory guys first two games say went a bit south um, it was it's gonna be difficult to win either of those games and maybe the first one if I made slightly better um, reads we could have potentially been in for a win but it's gonna be a hard one um, but so we're coming into um, play against well so we're not gonna be putting out the the best damage against Ivory's Pokemon um, with the remainder of our moves so I'm thinking best option on bomb deer Let's go rock slide again. Hopefully, um, worst comes to worst, we do good damage to Sylveon um, and King Gambit. We'd flinch, but as we can see, um, they didn't want the smoke and they left the game early. Um, so, does that count as a victory, guys? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's move into the next game. Okay, so moving on to the final game. So we're coming up against a completely different team composition um, again. Um, so looking at the team we're going to be up against today. Um, Skeledurge, Toxapex, Spiritomb, Garchomp, Houndstone, and a little bit of a weird one, Oikolone. 
So chances are this is going to be a trick room team based on what they're running. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. Um, so yeah, as always, we're going to be starting off uh, with the old faithful uh, How Lucha and Bombardier. Um, so as we can see in most of the previous games, we're going to be getting the terrestrialization up onto Bombardier. I'm um, going to try and get that rock slide off to get us a good start on chip damage. Um, based off what he's running Toxapex, I'm thinking he's going to be going Baneful Bunker or Toxic Spikes here. So there's a good chance um, I can get a Sword Dance up on the Halucha. So let's go for that. Um, and let's see what they do with their Spirit Team here. Um, so Terrestrial Eye straight off the bat, they've gone for a Psychic, um, which does scare me a little bit. Um, I'm now thinking, what do I have that's going to be... Um, Effective against it, but I think um, actually, if my bombardier um, survives a good amount, um, I've got a throat chop um, which I could deliver to it. One straight to the throat, uh, hit him in the jugular, and uh, take him out. So, uh, hopefully, that will happen. Uh, hopefully, we get a reasonable bit of chip damage um, off this rock slide here, um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so, we see a baneful bunk as predicted. Um, so, let's get a sword dance up on the Alucha. Um, get some decent attack rise in there, so two stages up already. Um, so it's looking to be a good start for us, um, and we'll see how this one goes. Um, we'll see where the spirit team is going. Um, could he be going? Well, he's not gone for a shadow sneak because uh, I would have already been moved. Um, so we see, yeah, trick room um, as I thought earlier. Good chance this was going to be a trick room team. Um, so yeah, chance with me running second this whole time. Um, at this point, because they got Trick Room up, I'm thinking my slowest Pokemon is probably Corviknight, um, and it actually maybe does benefit from being in a Trick Room team. Um, so let's uh, try and switch Corviknight in for the Bombardier and try save Bombardier um, for later on uh, if we can um, ride out this Trick Room. Um, save our Rock Slides for then. So let's see how this play goes for us. So um, yeah, switch out uh, Corviknight coming in now. Um, let's see uh, what sort of damage they're going to be putting out uh, with their characters. If they've gone for anything uh, poison move um, on the Toxapex onto Corviknight, that shouldn't affect us, which would be nice. Um, but as we see, Hypnosis out on Halucha, that's not great. Um, especially as we've already boosted his attack, um, so that's not going to be great for us. Um, and then the option is um, where do we go for this? Does he predict um, that we will be switching out the Howl Lucha now? Do I keep it on the field? So one of those 50-50 ones. Um, let me know what you guys would have done in this situation. Uh, I'd be curious to know. Um, at this point, um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite stubborn when I get put to sleep. Um, too often like to try and ride it out if I'm honest. Um, because yeah, it's, it's, it can be dodgy uh, pulling it away to just bring out sleep Pokemon uh, later on in the field. Um, does it really benefit you or is it better to just try and stall out, um, leave the sleep there and uh, hopefully buy a couple of turns um, and just bring in another sweeper later. Um, but as we can see it probably wasn't the greatest idea, um, had I switched it out their move wouldn't have been... Uh, effective at all um, he's managed to heal up a reasonable bit um, so the brave birds only taking him down to where previously at um, but hopefully it's enough chip damage um, to get us started off nicely um, so we'll see where we're going from here so oikolones in um, i say it was a questionable one i've never played up against the oikolone so i was interested to see um, what move sets um, it potentially had um, and what i had to offer um, so we see here, I'm going to try and go for a flying press. Let's just uh, hope that we wake up in this turn. Because um, uh, as I say, at, the, at this point, I do think it's worth switching out Halucha. Uh, if I had done it the first time, yes. Um, but at this point, let's um, let's just uh, let it be a sacrifice. Um, and hopefully, um, potentially, I think at this point, I might not do we bring the Bombardier in um, just so we can get chip damage onto both Pokemon? Um, hopefully, keep Corviknight in there asleep. Hopefully, he has enough resistance that um, he'll stay up. Or do we um, bring the Flamigo in now, who's going to be able to uh, potentially deal with both the Oikolone and the Spiritomb um, in two turns? So, we'll see about this one. Um, I'm hoping that the chip damage that initially set up by Corviknight is also going to be enough on the Spiritomb. 
but we'll see how this goes. Um, so at this point, I'm thinking, um, yeah, it, if uh, Corvin has a chance to wake up, let's get a brave burn into Oikolone. Let's just try and get as much chip damage into it as we can. Um, then hopefully a low kick uh, would finish it off next turn. Um, we see Oikolone uh, is coming with the annoying tactic, so yawn, um, which isn't great for myself. Um, chance are next turn we, we're going to have both Pokemon asleep. But as we see, um, Flamigo's managed to come in. Um, Choice Band was potentially a good option as well. Boost the attack. Um, Float Drops is a fairly powerful move. I believe it's, it's, it's 70 power or 60 power. I'll have to do the exact uh, look up on that one. Um, but also, it looks like uh, we may have uh, bypassed the Trick Room as well. So it looks like for the rest of the game, we should be outspeeding his Pokemon. Because it's unlikely he's running a second Pokemon with the move Trick Room on it. Um, so chance are we, if we can survive a couple of turns um, with Corviknight or potentially if it wakes up this turn um, then we, we, we could be on um, some good moves. Um, I'll be honest with you guys I did know Throw Chop was the only move I was going to be able to use but for some reason I just thought I wanted to see. Um, so yeah, Throw Chop onto uh, Garchomp, a little bit of chip damage. We're just going to try to get as much chip as we can so that when we get Bombadil on the field hopefully um, Rock Slides are enough. Um, to take out both of the enemies uh, potentially in one move um, and then I believe he'll only have one Pokemon left um, and at that point we're set up quite nicely for victory uh, the bird keeper challenge might have been completed guys it's taken a while uh, it was a few fun games well yeah and definitely maybe the the first game wasn't the most fun uh, it's never fun playing up against uh, well I was calling it a, a gimme go I just remembered it's called golden go um, so yeah, standard terms video guys, uh, get the name of the Pokemon wrong the whole time and then remember it right at the end. Um, but as we can see, yeah, so unfortunately um, Migos the Flamigo, he is asleep. Um, I hate playing teams like this. Uh, yes, yeah, so one thing I hate is it being put to sleep, especially from uh, a lot of my games against my uh, good friend Bahamut. He likes to run Pokemon that can put me to sleep and um, forever being asleep for three turns. I don't know how he always gets the luck. But it just seems to happen. Um, so right, we see. Um, so coming in now, um, I say bring in the last sweepers. What we've saved it for, because um, there's actually they've they've turned this game around quite nicely in their favour, despite losing the trick room. Um, the yawn plays have come off quite nicely. So we can own. fair enough, mate. Uh, there's, there's there's some viability to you. Um, but at this point, yeah, I think he's made a bit of a misplay. So. He's protecting, um, actually no, I, I beg to differ, it's actually a uh, further play, that, that wasn't too bad. So we can get some chip damage um, into the, the Oikolone, although I think I think the, the Garchomp would have been able to survive the, um, the Rock Slide and probably get a reasonable bit of chip damage into um, Bombardier, which at this point he, he kind of needs to. Um, so these, these are my two, two remaining Pokemon. Um, if he can get rid of Bombardier, then I think he's quite set in this battle because Corviknight is, is not putting out too much damage, so he's not too much to worry about. Um, whereas we're going to see, uh, yeah, Bombardier is a slight bit more of an issue. Um, so again, was bringing the Toxapex uh, the best play? Or would it have been better to uh, take one on the chin, um, lo lose the Garchomp, bring the Toxapex in later? It well, it's a question. It depends how much the, the Oikolone can do to the um, Corviknight, I guess. Uh, reasonable, decent bit of damage with that uh, Seed Bomb, which is an issue for myself. Um, hopefully, we're going to be able to survive the next uh, turn or wake up in this turn. Um, so, and we can see, I think this is the point. No, it's not this point. At this point, I'm questioning what to do. So I think um, if we we try and go for the brave bird, let's get this oil clone off the field. I've had enough of these yawns. Um, and then rock slide. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to do enough uh, to, as we see, to get the oil clone off the field. A decent bit of chip damage into top specs set up. Um, so at this point, we're sitting quite comfortably. Um, it depends what kind of play he goes for next, um, and even better, we've got a flinch onto the rock slide, off the rock slide. Uh, the luck was just there this game, guys. Um, so he's bringing in the Garchomp now. Um, now, say there's a chance that if I do a rock slide now, I'll probably get rid of the Toxapex, but do I get rid of the Garchomp? 
Um, I say I think this this may be a bit of a misplay. Um, let me know your thoughts on this, guys. Um, but at this point, um, you're going to see he goes for a double protect, protect and brave baneful bunker. Would it have been a better option to potentially try and double up the attack um, into Bombardier? I see the chance our top specs. I don't think would have been surviving the attack, but I think Garchomp potentially would have. Um, and I think. That might have been a better option than trying to stall out an extra turn, um, especially with um, Corviknight being asleep. Because if you if he's still asleep next turn, there's a good chance they could still go on for the win. Um, but <laughs> I'm not going to complain, guys. Because I say this is, was a hard challenge. Um, but maybe I won um, in the third game. I so say you guys are going to have to let me know. I think I was on for a victory there. Um, but so yeah, so. Toxapex uh, would have gone down, but the Garchomp would have survived. Um, would he have been able to put enough damage in uh, to take away? And then again, another misplay. I um, wouldn't have gone for the Corviknight because it was asleep. Um, I would have gone for Bill White potentially. I'm not sure what moves he's running, but perhaps a, a Dragon Claw onto the Bombardier. Uh, maybe been enough for himself. But uh, we see there, final move, knockoff. Um, we've got rid of his item, not that we needed to. Get rid of your room service, your time is up my friend. Um, so yeah guys, um, victory there, we finally did it. Well I've been Benediction Game aka Pokerzips and this has been the Bird Keeper Challenge. I hope you've enjoyed this one guys. Um, and if you'd like to see more NPC challenges, um, let me know which kind of uh, trainers you'd like to see me build a team around. Um, just leave comments uh, down below. I'm going to have a look through and see which one of the best ones um, I put a team together. But thanks for watching guys um, and I hope you enjoyed this one and as always keep it holy.